It is a damp Silverstone circuit that greets the Masters racing legends, Formula One cars from 1966 to 1985. So the return to power, the three litre era of Formula One, which had the backbone as the Cosworth DFE, and that is what is powering all of our cars in this race today. Hello everybody, wherever you are joining us, whether you are at the Silverstone circuit itself or across the globe, thank you for being with us for this final afternoon of action from the festival of historic motorsport that is the Silverstone Festival as we get ready for our second race of the historic legends. Christoph Danzeborg is the man who starts on pole position and again with that uh, exclusion for car number seven, it, uh, it is going to be a game still, I think, extremely competitive, uh, even if the wing is an inch higher. Now, almost everybody was on wet weather tyres, but not quite everybody. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Ed reports where well, he talked to Michael Lyons, and uh, Michael Lyons was not being committed to going on to wet. So you can see the grooves there in the wet weather tyres. Um, but Mike Lyons in his car does not have wets on. So Alistair Douglas, that's going to make life even more entertaining. When you've got sort of 600 odd uh, Cosworth horsepower under your feet, uh, under your right foot, even wet weather tyres aren't going to harness that. And slicks on a track, well, outside our window, coming out of Woodcut onto the old pit straight, there is no visible dry line at all. It's going to be a bit of a balancing act. It certainly is, yes. I guess uh, Michael, probably one of the few people that uh, might be able to harness that for the first few laps and then uh, maybe make some progress. Uh, because the difference in lap time uh, on a drying track on slicks compared to, as Nick Padmore kind of didn't say but uh, was alluding to, those wets that he's got on are not going to last very long. And uh, you'll see Michael, if the track remains reasonably dry, uh, Michael will be uh, seconds quicker than anyone else on slicks. The only problem is, it is only a 20-minute sprint, and so, yeah, there shouldn't need to be much damp patch hunting. Great to see so many young fans here, families bringing the kids along, and that's exactly what motor racing, what sport needs, is parents to bring kids, whether they're competing or watching and watching often leads to competing it is the parents that help the new generation so the field coming round being led by the bt49 brabham uh, of christoph dansenborg the white and blue car the uh, santa livery and and I think PK, a three-time world champion for brabham and uh, I am certainly no expert, but I haven't seen any spray whatsoever from these cars uh, in the section so far. Now, we might run into some wetter track as they go out of uh, Beckett's and down towards Stowe Corner, but uh, past us here at Woodcut, the track is, it isn't completely dry, but it's not wet. And uh, it, if I was Michael, I'd be saying, yeah, I got the right tyres on here. Yeah, it could well be. Well, he is third in our running order, Michael Lyons in the black and gold at Lotus 72. Lotus 92. Uh, alongside him is Jamie Constable, Tyrrell 011. Well, lots and lots of water on the hangar straight, but it is a straight. So the question is, how dry is it down at the end as they get into the braking area for Stowe? Because that's actually the germane part you can pretty much buy. There are no, there are no water rivers across um, the track. You can see that uh, Nick Padmore's Lotus 77 has got sticker tyres on, so absolutely brand new unrun tyres. Most of these will maybe have done a lap or two somewhere to scrub them in a little bit. And they're giving the drivers a second full formation lap behind the safety car because they have not been out on this track when it was wet and these things are not slow um, by anybody's standards. Now we need to see where does the water lying on the track stop because uh, we've seen it's mainly Hangar Straight, Stowe Corner and Club Corner we've seen. Uh, and now they're going up the Hamilton Straight. We've still got a little bit of spray there, so it's still wet. But uh, when do they come into the dry? Because 
and nowhere near half the track wet that we've seen so far. And, uh, I mean, yesterday's rain affected us here yes. in the old pit lane, and this part of Sick was not only bone dry, but in sunshine when you couldn't see cars coming past the old pits because of the spray. So, it's uh, again, it looks like the wind has changed or the rain has just drifted across in a different direction. See, the runoff areas are partly dry, but they're not racing on the runoff areas. And this part of the track is sort of half and half, isn't it? Yeah. Not as dry as it is here at Woodcut, which uh, we have big dry patches amongst the damper patches. Yeah, I'm not sure they're that big. <laughs> it might be half a slick wide. Uh, less wet on the Wellington Strait. So there's no spray there. So it does look like around the wing is actually the wetter part of the track. Beckett's down to, mm, let's say, Club Corner and out of farm. And then, yeah, you can see again the, the different nature of the track. If you can pick it out on your big screens, and certainly those of you at home should be able to see that there are shinier and lighter patches and there are darker patches where it is drier. No spray off the tyres here as they come out of Luffield through Woodcote and past the old pits, the pits that these cars know. And now the sun comes out, which will help further to dry the track as they turn into Cops Corner. That lovely uh, BT49 Brabham of Christoph Donselberg, it really is a lovely shape, isn't it? Gorgeous, gorgeous piece of kit. And right at the back there, Mike Cantillon, car number seven, who uh, Ed was talking to, has uh, unfortunately was disqualified from yesterday's race due to that technical infringement. But Now, if anybody was going to gamble on a slick, he has absolutely nothing to lose, does he? And everything to gain, Mike Cantillon. Again, let's take a look at the very last car as it comes here through Beckett's guys and just double check if we can see whether or not he's got wets or slicks. Car number seven, I can see the grooves. He has got wets on, hasn't he? Let's just double check. Yes, he has. OK, all right. Well, so he's giving himself a fighting chance of grip. But third on the grid, Michael Lyons in the number 11 Lotus. He's going to win it or bin it, isn't he? Win it or spin it, possibly. Um, and it rather depends on where he tries to make passes and where he finds the water. So 27, Cosworth era Formula One cars. Lights off on the safety car. We are ready to unleash the beasts. Just take half a step back if you're watching trackside because this could get very lively very quickly. Masters Racing Legends are about to go green at Silverstone on a damp track, very wet, pies past the new pits and drier around the rest of the circuit. Christoph Damsenborg painted onto the white line on the inside, lots of spray for the pole man. Mark Hazel in his Williams FW07B in second place. Their, the re entire field is on wet weather tyres with the exception of the first John Player Special Lotus, that is Michael Lyons, car number 11, he is on slicks. The track is drying, it has stopped raining, it is a 20 minute race, he only has two cars to pass to win, but he is going to be at a traction disadvantage in the wetter part of the track and they're starting to leave that as they come down the Wellington Strait and immediately Mike Lyons makes the move pounces on Mark Hazel and he goes by and Hazel dropping back down the order very very slow down the Wellington Strait and everybody moving past him around the outside Michael Lyons going for the lead and getting his in Luffield that's being very brave but it is much less wet here if you run over the curbs you saw from the second Lotus there then you could be in trouble but it is Michael Lyons his intuition his bravery has paid off he has taken the lead, Christoph Danzenborg in second, it's the Penske in third, the red and white car of Matt Wrigley, he runs out wide and Martin Stretton's Tyrrell goes by. Lotus has gone by as well. And now it's uh, Michael Lyons trying to make a big enough gap that when he gets down onto the hangar straight, which is just a couple of corners away, he will be at a disadvantage, particularly when he puts the brakes on for Stowe Corner and he wants to be far enough ahead 
Here he comes now, we can see the spray start, and Michael in the lead here in number 11 on slick tyres. Where does he touch the brake pedal? He can ease off the throttle and roll onto the brake nice and gently behind, diving up the inside in 99. Jamie Constable, the two up to second, ahead of the second Lotus. That's the black and gold car number six of Nick Padball. Christoph Dansenborg's Brabham is currently in fourth, make that fifth as through goes the Penske of Matthew Wrigley. So Danzigborg not feeling the love from the front of his Brabham in these conditions. And the race leader is Michael Lyons, but in the wettest part of the track, they are reeling him in. You already can see Nick Padmore looking for a wet patch as the uh, first of the McLaren, Steve Hartley, comes steaming down the inside. He picks up the place as well, and he's up to sixth or seventh, si uh, sixth place now, I think. And to Padmore has taken the lead there through uh, Abbey and Farm, the sweepers. Michael just not got the grip there, but uh, once they get back round to the dry part of the track, he may well get through again. Oh, oh and, a spin. and a spin from Jamie Cunsports. Tyrrell out of the lead on wet weather tyres. So just feeling perhaps more confident in the grip than there actually was grip to be confident in. Car number 11, Michael Lyons, the slightly older Lotus of Nick Padmore, challenging him down the inside. He's got the grip to go by. We saw Lyons go the long way around the outside here before. He's going to tuck up on the inside. It is less damp, and he's got much more rubber on the road. And that's why a slick tyre is better than a groove tyre, because there is, it's effectively a wider tyre. It doesn't have big bits missing from it. Along the old Grand Prix pit straight into Cops Corner, and this is the part of the track where Michael Lyons has a huge advantage. And uh, as the track dries out, the wet shod uh, cars will lose their advantage even on the wet parts of the track because the tyres will start to overheat as they come into the Beckett sweepers. And it's Michael Lyons versus Nick Padmore in similar coloured cars with Matt Wrigley in third place. And it's all arms and elbows going into Cops Corner there. The green 012 Tyrrell of Martin Stretton was shaping up on the inside. I thought the next shot he'd be by. No, he's actually gone back one because the Tyrrell of uh, the uh, McLaren rather of Steve Hartley has gone by the Tyrrell and Stretton losing out again to the 012 that we saw a spin of Jamie Constable yesterday's uh, fifth place car. So. Yeah, it's all arms and elbows. Through goes the McLaren, and back comes the Penske being brave under braking. That's fantastic stuff from Matthew Wrigley. Gets back in front of Steve Hartley, car number 77. Wrigley, the red, white, and blue of the American Grand Prix team, Penske. And in the wet, again, car number six, Nick Pagmore, just looking to run the cars through the water to try and cool them a fraction to bring the temperature of the tyres down. A change for third, three goes Steve Hartley, and again, a change for the lead. Michael Lyons tucks his nose back in front because uh, the number six car, Nick Padmore, had just sort of wriggled in front. The wettest part of the track, again, Padmore sliding off the corner. This four-car battle, Steve Hartley's McLaren ahead of Jamie Constable with a blue helmet in his green Tyrrell, and then the Penske, and then Martin Stretton. Jamie Constable's done well to stay in the top four after that spin, and uh, Christoph Donselberg also having a spin as well in the BT49 Brabham. But the two uh, John Player special Lotuses at the front of the field, and uh, <laughs> it's amazing after, what, three laps, or two and a half laps now, uh, Michael Lyons has not been able to make a significant impression on the lead as each time they come to the wet part of the track, the car in second place, that of Nick Padmore, is able to close up. And then Steve Hartley in third place, Jamie Constable fourth, Martin Stretton in fifth, and Matt Wrigley next up in sixth place. And here comes Mike Cantal on car number seven. From the back of the grid goes by the Hesketh 308C, the car made famous by uh, Lord Hesketh and James Hunt back in 19, early 1970s. Uh, that's when this Penske was racing as well, whereas the tool behind it from the early 1980s, there's a decade in development between the two. Penske PC3 and the Tyrrell 012. Martin Stretton goes the long way round the outside. Now he's got a, a distance to chase 99, the one year younger Tyrrell of Jamie Constable in front of him. Such a different of design between those two cars, and that's some of the rule changes that came in. These cars predate ground effect, are ground effect cars, or are flat bottom cars that followed on from ground effect. The ground effect cars no longer using their skirts, though, so they don't have that enormous hoovering downforce. 
and the two Lotuses, nearly a decade between them. Car number six in second place, Lotus 77 was raced in 1976, and the Lotus 92 was raced nearly a decade later. So, so many different rule sets had come and gone by that stage, the car's looking very different indeed. And there is our third place car, Steve Hartley, and there is the Ram March with 37. That is uh, Werner Dansenborg behind him in another of the uh, Williams FW07s. Coming up to uh, the tight right at Village, up the inside goes the number 26 car, which is uh, Kyle Tilly in his Tyrrell 011 with the Candy sponsorship, one of their main sponsors for a couple of years. Uh, and that's followed by the number 21 of uh, Max Werner in his Hesker 308C, which uh, James Hunt never really liked. He did drive it early in the year, but didn't really get on with it. Oh, and trouble for the Surtees. Charlie Kennedy. And that, I'm afraid, may bring out the safety car. And that is going to be another nail in the coffin of the wet tyres on all of these runners, with the exception of our race leader, Michael Lyons. It will allow the, the uh, drivers and the candy Tyrrell pulls off. The problem there. So it will allow the tyres to cool down if a safety car is scrambled. Somebody's coming past us sounding That's very rough. That was the candy Tyrrell, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's on uh, less than eight cylinders, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, either that or he's broken in the exhaust, but it was uh, grumbling very horribly. The rule of thumb with the Cosworth DFE, DFE was if it stops shaking your fillings loose, switch it off, it's broken. Down the inside comes Steve Hartley for second at Stowe. Goes by Nick Padmore. Again, look at the difference, the, the, uh, the track at the front of the McLaren compared to the much narrower Lotus. And this McLaren, the, the wheels out wide to allow the airflow to go underneath it for the ground effect. The Lotus, the wheels tucked in tight to reduce the frontal area pre-ground effect. Such a dramatic difference in the look of those two cars. And then, again, again ground effect car in the 011 and a post-ground effect flat bottom car in the Tyrrell 012. So again, the minimum amount of floor and the minimum frontal end rear area in the car that Martin Stratton is driving compared to the 99 car of Jamie Constable, just the previous generation of car, but needing those wheels to be out wide to channel the air through those tunnels under the floor to gain that ground effect. It looks as though the clerk of the course is, uh, is happy to let this run under a local yellow with that car off on the inside of the loop. And uh, Steve Hartley it is in uh, the car that John Watson took to the win in uh, 1982 in Detroit from 18th on the grid. He also won, uh, or came second, sorry, in Brazil in that very same car. So Steve Hartley threw into second place, but uh, Nick Padmore not lost touch. And Martin Stretton is, I think he's closing up a little bit on Nick Padmore, isn't he, in the 012 2 Tyrrell. Yeah. And uh, behind Nick Padmore is Jamie Constable. Uh, where could he have been if he hadn't had that uh, spin early on at the loop? Just uh, too much power, too early on, just spun the car around, but has done really well to stay in touch with this group. Well, he might yet end up in second or third, which is possibly where he was when he looped the car around. Michael Lyons has checked out seven seconds clear, and he's lapped last time round 2.7 seconds quicker than Steve Hartley in the McLaren in second place. Nick Padmore in third, hanging on in front of Martin Stretton, Jamie Constable now down in fifth place, ahead of Ken Tyrrell, so those two 011 team cars running nose to tail, and through goes Martin Stretton, up to fourth place, up to third place, beg your pardon, vicious squirm from the Tyrrell, but Mighty Mouse has got the bit between his teeth, he's the perfect size for these cars, almost invisible in the cockpit of the Tyrrell, and there is Nick Padmore giving chase. They're coming up behind the ex Vittorio Brambilla March. And Steve Hartley in second place. Stretton is coming for him, though. Again, has the chance to move out and try and run those tyres through a bit of water to cool them down. Stretton's confidence seems to have built, doesn't it? He's, he's prepared to uh, throw the car around a little bit. Not necessarily the quickest way to drive the car in dry conditions, but in wet conditions, he's finding the grip, and he's come up alongside Hartley. Did he get through as they go, went into the loop? I don't know, but uh, Jamie Constable got by Nick Padmore for sure, and Padmore's going to fall into the clutches of Ken Tyrrell, not that Ken Tyrrell, another Ken Tyrrell in the till, uh, originally built by Ken Tyrrell. 
So Hartley still in second, Stretton still in third as they go by the orange march and down the inside. Constable just hanging on from Padmore in the Lotus. But Padmore has not given up. It looks as though in the dry conditions his car is working a little better now. I'm not sure what adjustments the teams may have made. If you've softened the car off, that's possibly a mistake. I would think that everybody left dry suspension settings and just put on wet weather tyres. And here comes Ken Tyrrell. He's going by Nick Padmore as well, following Jamie Constable in car 99. And again, Martin Stretton all over the back of Steve Hartley as they come down into the Beckett's S's. Through they go, right, left, and then right again, and then uh, a slightly more open left onto the hangar straight. So important to get the speed down the hangar straight. Long, long run down to oh! Stoke Corner, and almost spinning, rally driving style from Martin Stretton. It's not often you see a, a Formula One car being driven so sideways and, yeah. and actually staying in the right direction. And then the pair of Tyrrells behind, led by Jamie Constable from Ken Tyrrell. Not quite sure how much steering lock they have. Hartley's off in the gravel at Stowe, comes back on. Not sure how much steering lock Martin uh, Stretton's got on that 012 Tyrrell, but he was using pretty much everything there on the lock stops uh, as he chased Steve Hartley. Hartley then going off at Stowe, so Stretton is in second and now really hunting for the water. That's possibly part of the reason why he had such a big squirm coming out of the chapel curve. And here comes Ken Tyrrell, goes around Jamie Constable. That's a big move. Can he hang on on the outside? He can. That's fantastic. And look at the speed that he went round. Jamie Constable losing uh, half a dozen car lengths because he just had to breathe off the throttle there on the inside to avoid contact. So Ken Tyrrell really putting in a move around the outside. Big, brave and committed. And uh, a slight drier line appearing in parts of the track now, the wet parts of the track that we've just been through. And uh, Ken Tyrrell now on his way down the Wellington Strait, chasing after Martin Stratton, then the Constable and Nick Padmore, and then Steve Hartley behind after that spin, and uh, a puncture or a damaged rim which has caused the puncture. Yeah, for he's hit the, something uh, there, hasn't he, Paul Grant? For the old uh, Brambilla car, which... Uh, we mentioned yesterday, Vittorio Brambilla won the race, he was so excited, he threw his hands up in the air and immediately spun after the finish. Yeah, it looked more second-hand than that, actually, because he clattered into the barriers as well. So what happens here? Now, is it a tyre deflation, though? He understeers from the inside into Werner Dansenborg's... Uh, Christoph Dansenborg, I beg or was it Werner? It was Werner Dansenborg's car. So he's very deflated, very disappointed with himself. That was driver error, I'm afraid. And he thought there was going to be a little more grip than there was. So uh, Steve Hartley back up and running and chasing down Nick Padmore for fifth. Michael Lyons, every single lap is a fastest race lap for the race leader. He is currently 14 seconds ahead of Martin Stretton. His last lap was a 2.05.11. Stretton's in second, a 2.05.83. And he's gone quicker again, 2.05.01. Another tenth quicker for Michael Lyons. The track definitely favoured the brave and the slick and is now getting quicker. However, it is still undoubtedly a big handful in the wettest part of the track. Here, Stowe through past the pits. You can see Nick Padmore and Steve Hartley both fighting the cars, first to get them to turn in and then to get the back to follow the front. I think I noticed there Steve Hartley had quite... Yes, the same again. He's got a lot of understeer through the corners, so that's... Uh, Partly the setup of the car maybe has been set up for wetter conditions, but also the tyres may be starting to lose that grip. You see there he's having to turn the wheel more than he needs to get the car around the corner. And don't forget that the car in front is a pre-ground effect car, so its downforce comes from its wings. The wings on a ground effect car didn't generate a lot of downforce. They were for channeling the air and balancing that centre of pressure front to rear on the car. So without the downforce, that McLaren there has, without the, the, the sealed tunnels, that McLaren there has much less downforce than it was designed to have in period. And if you don't have downforce on the front, you've got a lot of understeer. And we just saw a brief shot of Michael Lyons romping away at the front of the field. Again, Nick Padmore versus Steve Hartley. And this is for fifth position. 
We've got a heat haze down the front straight or down the old pit straight now, so the warmth is coming back into the track as Hartley goes through on the inside, finding grip there, and that negates the understeer for the tyres. But um, not, not sure these tyres are feeling very good. Steve Hartley, the jam baron, is probably feeling like he's squirming around on jam rather than rubber. And here comes Mike Cantillon. Cantillon looking for a top six finish from the back row of the grid. Mike Cantillon now, his next target is Nick Padmore, who's driving really, really well in the earlier car. And uh, down the uh, hangar straight, he's, uh, is that, yes, he's saying to Mike Cantillon, pass me on the right, I've seen you, you I'll let you through. And uh, he knew that he was, uh, it's a fight he doesn't want to pick. And again, the Williams coming towards us. Look how widely spaced those front tyres are. We were looking at the Tyrrell earlier on uh, and, the, and the McLaren where the, the tyres were sort of, the front tyres right in the middle of the line of the rear tyres. Here, the front track is as wide as the rear. And again, that's to just get that airflow under the ground effect uh, floor of the FW07. And so Mike Cantillon now up into sixth position. He's got two minutes, so this lap plus another, because Michael Lyons is about half a lap ahead, so he's got a lap and three quarters to try and catch Steve Hartley and put a move in for fifth place, and then another three seconds to Jamie Cunstall. I'm not sure he's going to do that. Halfway round the lap, though, in this Lotus 92 comes our race leader. Michael Lyons, again, another fastest lap. The only man inside the two minute five, so two minute 4.8, so he's two or three tenths of a second faster in every lap than the previous. And the car that Michael Lyons driving uh, was used by Nigel Mansell in the first half of 1983, uh, the chassis that uh, the Lotus 92 that Michael Lyons is in. And uh, I, I'm sure in the hands of uh, our Nige, it would have been. Uh, driven just as quickly as uh, Michael Lyons is taking it through and Nigel wasn't frightened of putting slicks on when it was a little bit damp. Now is that the one that he bounced off the barriers uphill from Massenet, uh, from, from uh, San Devo at Monaco, because that would have been in the first half of the season yes. uh, when he was uh, taking the lead of the race. Now then, never mind catching Steve Hartley, Hartley now all over the back of the 99 car and through, goes past Jamie Cunstable, Mike Cantillon is closing from behind, it's going to be the enterprising last lap, leader comes across the line with 44 seconds to go, so this is the last lap of the race, Martin Stretton in second place, 16 seconds back, and then Ken Tyrrell, 21 back, and then Steve Hartley now in fourth, ahead of Jamie Cunstable, Mike Cantillon there, so those three cars, that's four, fifth and sixth, and I rather sense, I'm afraid, that Jamie Cunstable is going to end up in sixth rather than fourth, because uh, Steve Hartley's gone by for fourth, Constable right there, car number 99, the Tyrrell 011, but here comes the Williams and Mike Cantillon with a point to prove. And uh, Mike Cantillon searching for the wet part of the track to cool the tyres momentarily. Uh, you wouldn't think it would make much difference, but uh, clearly uh, it does, and he makes his way up now, closing in on Jamie Constable as they come up to Village. He's not close enough to get through there. In fact, I think he braked a little bit later than he would have liked, and it's, uh, he ran slightly wide. Now into the loop, and again, Mike Cantillon oh. running out wide there. He's just not got the grip at the front of that car, has he? No, really pushing hard. Again, same problem that Steve Hartley had without ground effect, those wings, which are the same as they would have been in period, they're just for directing air, they're not for generating a lot of downforce. So Steve Harvey runs clear in fourth place, and Jamie Constable might hang on. Now, I think there were yellow flags out there coming down into uh, the loop because of that uh, stationary march. But here we go, past the old pit lane, and half a lap to go, Mike Cantillon versus Jamie Cunstable. Cunstable having a long look in the mirrors. Is he coming? He is coming, he goes through. And it's, and it's at the higher speed that the Williams and indeed the McLaren of Steve Hartley look more comfortable because there the upper body is doing something for you as well. At low speed, they're, they're really struggling with understeer. No struggle so far for Michael Lyons though wouldn't be drawn about whether he's going to change from slicks to wets and did not do so. Victory for the ex-Nigel Mansell, Lotus 92, Michael Lyons gambled on red and it came, or gambled on black let's say, and it came up for him. Uh, Martin Stretton in second place.
Again, drove a fighting race in the Tyrrell 012. That ex Michele Alvareto chassis comes across the line in second place. Third place will be Ken Tyrrell, just behind him and only a couple of seconds behind. So two Tyrrells on the podium. Then Steve Hartley's McLaren takes fourth and Mike Cantillon did get through for fifth ahead of Jamie Constable. He probably got by him on the hangar straight down into Cox Corner, into Stowe Corner. So Nick Padmore in the number six Lotus and he wins the Fittipaldi class, which is the pre-ground effect category. 37, Werner Dansenburg just ahead of Christoph Dansenburg. They are 1-2 in the Patrick Head class. And those are ground effect, early ground effect cars. So the uh, Williams ahead of the Brabham. And here in the Ram March, the John McDonald run cars. Drifting his way through. <laughs> That's a great look, isn't it? I don't, it wasn't the most successful car. I do think it's really quite a handsome car, though, that, uh, that Ram March. A couple of our orange and white liveried Ragnar arrows uh, coming across the line as well. well we didn't see uh, too much of our earlier cars like the Lech. The, the Tyrrell, uh, beg your pardon, the Penske faded a little, didn't it, in the hands of Matthew Wrigley. He'll end up in 10th place. Michael Lyons, well, there may be better adrenaline pumps, but I'm not sure that I can think of one right now than ragging around a Formula One Lotus in the wet on slicks. There's still plenty of groove on those tires. I'm not sure. There's much life left in them, though. I think they've all been really overheated and overworked. Martin Stretton in second place. Ken Tyrrell right behind him. Car number 23 in third in another of the Tyrrells. One of the 011s. Denim moved to Tyrrell with the demise of the team they previously sponsored, a seller. And Candy moved on to Tyrrell as well, who'd also been an Acela sponsor Another Italian brand. And there's the 308C Hesketh. That was driven in period by James Hunt. Carlos Hesketh and his team based at his baronial home in Northamptonshire. Really upset the Formula One Apple car. Lots and lots of small teams did, but they ended up not just winning a Grand Prix with this uh, tiny champagne swilling coterie that uh, were supporting the team, but also produced a world champion eventually in the form of James Hunt, while well, Martin Stretton. <laughs> Obviously, a, a little sarky uh, comment there to Michael Lyons, who gives him a shove for his pains, but that was a, a race well run by Michael Lyons. Might have a word or two more for Nicola than he managed for head. I think that's possibly pressure relieved. Did a great job. Confirmation: Martin, uh, Michael Lyons winning uh, by over 20 seconds from Martin Stretton and Ken Tyrrell, who are nose to tail almost across the line in two different generations of Tyrrell's Formula One family. Steve Hartley's McLaren in fourth, ahead of Mike Cantillon from the back of the grid. Yesterday's winner on the road, and Jamie Constable rounding out the top six. Three Tyrrells in the top six. It's not modern Formula One, is it? Nick Padmore's Lotus was seventh, ahead of Werner and Christoph Dansenborg and Matthew Wrigley rounding out the top 10 in the Penske PC3. The rain definitely changed the order of the cars. Miles Griffiths ran March in 11th head of Simon Fish in the Arrows, Max Werner in the Hesketh, and Mark Hazel in his Williams ahead of the McLaren in M29. In the shadow, DN9, we didn't really see much of that. Kyle Tilley's Tyrrell sounded fairly sick halfway through, and Charlie Kennedy's Surtees lost a wheel, uh, as did Paul Grant's March. Wet start to the 66 to 85 Cosworth era Formula One race for Masters Racing Legends. And right from the start, it was clear 
that on slicks alone michael lyons in the lotus 92 car number 11 would have a battle on his hands jamie constable spun away an early lead in the wet condition steve hartley started to carve through the field in his ex john watson mclaren but the penske of mike wrigley was very competitive early on when the track was at its wettest as it dried however the later cars started to come back into the resurgence problem for the ex vittorio brambilla march contact with the mclaren that left it off the track Martin Stretton working his way through the top six and up into a very strong second place in the Tyrrell 012. But there was to be no catching Michael Lyons as the track dried. He just made hay and ran away to win it comfortably from Stretton and Ken Tyrrell in a pair of Tyrrells.